Hello everyone, welcome to how to make topography in Rhino. In this tutorial, we will go over how to make topography using uh, topo lines and a really neat way that you can edit your topography really easily towards the end of the video. So please stay tuned for that tip of uh, this tutorial. So without further ado, let's hop into Rhino. And this video, this tutorial is assuming that you already have a you already have the topographic information. Okay, so let's open up this file. I have a topo site here. And yeah, so this is my base map information. And if I were to try to make a surface out of these lines, uh, it might crash your computer and it will also just be hard to navigate. So the first thing that we're going to do is go over to layers and create a new layer called trimmed topo and then in addition we're just going to make another a default layer that we can we can use and then we're going to select the to topography which if you haven't already make sure that it's in a group just to make this easier and then do control c control v now you've copied and pasted that information you can come back into layers and only select one of those groups and then hit this layer button and go and put it on the trimmed layer, um, the trimmed layer. So layers are a little bit strange in Rhino. It takes a little bit you, you getting used to, but once you select an object, you'll see if you have this object properties selected, then you can uh, essentially move it to whatever layer you want. And when you select that layer, you're actually moving it to that layer. That's how you change the layers of an object. Okay, so now that we have that topo, I'm gonna just turn everything off for a second, then turn on the trimmed and turn on the topo just to really make sure that you have two separate layers with the topo information. All right, so, and then we're going to go back to this select, this check mark means you're on that layer and you're gonna create a rectangle and really only create it for what you what you need. Uh, try to do as little as possible uh, because it's, it's just gonna take a lot of information to make a surface out of this. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to trim this topography information. And now you know why we wanted to save that in the first place. So go ahead and trim this. Trim, 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 trim. Trim, trim, trim. And then you want to get to a point where you don't have any outlining lines to just make sure it's really clean. And you also want to make sure you've now ungrouped this. So I'm going to hit ungroup. So it's just separate lines. And you can regroup that if you want, up to you. And then just cleaning up all this extra line work. And then if you have things that haven't been trimmed yet, now that you're closer up, you can go right click, sorry, that's left click. You left click and drag from the down to the top. And that way, anything that is selected a little bit will trim trim that up real nice. So yeah, this is basically how we do it. Okay, so select this work and I'm just gonna finish cleaning all this up, make it really nice and clean. Okay, so even stuff like this, like, yeah, let's clean this up because it's gonna be annoying to deal with uh, if you have that just hanging out there. Then you're gonna select, oh, we still have this stuff. So let's just clean that up, make it nice and clean. And I'm gonna select all my line work and then I'm gonna select this outer rectangle control and deselect the rectangle. And then I'm gonna type in patch. And you'll see here, U spans, V spans, 25, 25. Uh, if your computer is not very fast, you can lower this down to 10. But essentially what these spans do is it's gonna give you the resolution, the accuracy. And so if you want a really, really accurate surface, you would bump this up to 100. But then again, it might crash your computer if you did that. So sometimes I'll just do 
50 or 25 and check if it's accurate enough. And if it is, I'll just move on and it's fine. Don't worry about the automatic trim and adjust tri uh, tangency. We're going to trim it afterwards. And let's hit OK. OK, so now we have this rectangle. And we're going to use that rectangle. We're going to do Control T. And we're going to trim that surface that it made. So that's what the patch does. It takes these series of curves and basically averages them out to make um, your topography. And you'll notice there are some errors. Like, for instance, I'm getting these crazy bumps here. That's maybe a case where I would then go back and, and redo this patch. So, and kind of take a look at why would it be doing that? Why is it creating those, those? And it's essentially because there's quite a bit of variation here. Uh, so I might just come back and, and clean this up a little bit. For instance, just getting rid of some of these smaller circles uh, and any kind of bits of information that um, are just making it a little bit too complicated. And then let's just try that one more time and do patch and might as well go up higher because it didn't seem to have pro issues processing that. Make sure you save before you press OK because sometimes it will go into the nebulous uh, just scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Sometimes if you're patient with it, it's fine. And then you'll see now, okay, it's it's doing a little bit, a better job of averaging that out. And at the end of the day, just consider, okay, what is really important that you actually need, uh, the information that you need. So sometimes I'll come back in here and I'll hit this rectangle and I'll go control uh, shift and then make this smaller and then trim the surface. And that way I'm making sure that my surfaces has nice and, and clean edges. Another thing that I should know is with this layers, it would be good to get everything as a group or at least on a layer so that um, you can control these topos on and off would be important. And so for instance, I would now wanna make this surface onto a new layer and we'll call this surface and add that to that, add it to that layer. So let's try one last thing here, um, surface, before we get into the contour. And I, I did wanna show the, the adjacency or the, the trimmed surface. So if I make the rectangle a little bit bigger, now I hit patch, I'm gonna adjust the trim here. Probably make this a little bit lower resolution so we don't have to wait around as long. Let's see if it's able to process this. Um, sometimes it doesn't process this so well because essentially you have this rectangle that you drew and that's at a certain Z height. And then you'll have points over here that are really low and points over here that are really high. And it's trying to adjust for all that information. Uh, and so that's kind of why it's freaking out. So I'm gonna hit escape because that's not even working at all. And let's just do like 10, like really make it really simple, automatic trim and see if it's able to pro even process that. There are options like the stiffness, for instance. Um, so you can see how it averages out between the, the top point and the bottom point, and then it has to kind of overcompensate, but it trimmed that surface to this area. So that's, that's essentially why I like to actually just select my to topography lines, hit patch. Again, you can adjust the stiffness, but for right now, uh, one would be fine. And just let it expand out because then it averages out and you'll, it's going crazy. And essentially one of the reasons why it's doing that is because I did so few spans. So I'll hit patch again. Let's just go back to 50. That seemed to be like a nice number to use. And we'll use 50. And it's going to load a little bit. And then once I have created that, I am going to select that surface and then go to the properties and then go and change it to the surface layer. So it makes sure that it's on a separate layer. 
And then we're going to contour that, that information in a couple of different ways once this is done loading. Sometimes you just have to be a patient, maybe go out and get a, a cup of coffee or something. Okay, so let's let's trim this up. I go select the rectangle, do control T. And now I'm gonna select my surface and I'm going to come down here and turn it onto the surface layer. And now I just, I'm maintaining control of my layers. A lot of, you can waste a lot of times with uh, trying to select information. So if you find yourself spending like 20 minutes trying to select a bunch of lines, that's a waste of time. You need to make sure that you put that line work on a specific layer so that you can turn everything off and select that information really quickly. So I'm gonna select my surface and then I'm gonna hit this, the, the circle button on here. No, if I move it, I'm just gonna move it, but I wanna select the circle, it highlights black, and then just extrude it downwards. Uh, and you'll notice that it's all bumpy on the bottom. And so to trim that up and make it nice and clean, I'm gonna select this and I'll do select in view. And then again, go and hit the rectangle tool and then hit control T scroll from the bottom to the top, hit okay, delete that rectangle. And now you should have this and you'll notice, okay, it's not solid. Let's type in cap and then make that solid. So now you have your solid, uh, uh, your solid surface. You could bring this to the CNC, get a piece of foam and CNC cut this out. But let's say you don't have a CNC machine and you wanna laser cut this. Uh, what you would do would you would use the word the contour. So I typed in contour, select the base layer, and then you want to just snap it to the Z. You do not want to make you do not want to be going in other directions. You want to be making sure that you're going upwards. And then for this exercise, let's just do 10 feet. So go 10 feet. Typically, what I would do is I would contour it by the thickness of the material to scale. So for instance, if my chipboard is eighth of an inch thick and I'm working in one eighth of an inch equals a foot, what's my contour gonna be? It's gonna be one foot contours. So in that case, if I'm gonna say my site model is gonna be eighth of an inch, I'm gonna do the same thing, press enter. Oh, I had 10 feet. So type in contour. Graphic scale, I don't know why I did that. Con tour select objects hit enter select base point select direction and then i'm going to do one foot and now it's going to take quite a while uh, so you could see if you made this out of chipboard uh, and your material is only eighth of an inch uh, you have a lot of layers to laser cut and make into a model uh, probably too many um, and so then you would say, well, maybe I need thicker material. And then maybe you maybe make half an inch and you cut those contours out on the CNC machine. All right, so that's how you contour. And, and before you select anything, when you just still have all these contours open, go ahead and make a new layer and, and type in contour. And then go properties, layer. Oh, I, I didn't, contour. contour. Now it's on the contour layer. Now when I go to layers, I, I just I want to really make sure that I have control over my layers. And it's, it's just, just really going to save you a lot of time. All right, cool. So now I have my contours, uh, pretty fun. Uh, and you could take those and lay those out and and laser cut them. We're going to turn those contours off, go back to our surface, and then contour in the other direction if we wanted a series of planes. So contour i'm going to contour in this direction and let's do 10 feet this time so it's a little bit less so this could be another option you could take a series of planes uh, and contour them in this direction maybe make some dowels make a really nice model that way i'm just going to move this to the side because i don't want to deal with this information so you have this series of planes i could select these curves and type in planar surface. Let me 
did not like that. You should be able to make this into It's not wanting to make those into planes. So what I would do instead of doing the planar surface, I could select all these curves, come up to top view, and then ex type in extrude curve. Just say yes for right now. Not really something we need to fret about. Uh, and then do, what was it, 10 feet? Now let's go back to this and now I have a series of these undulating um, these undulating curves. Pretty cool. I mean, that just looks cool. Um, you know, you could do ghosted, you could do technical. You could actually make a really nice, a really nice topography this way. That would be a cool, cool screenshot that we could then bring into Photoshop and do some some cool stuff with. So and you could also contour it in the other direction and create a series of planes. Okay, so let's just hide all that information for right now. And now we're gonna get into the special tip, which is a really cool technique to be able to adjust topography easily, which is really cool. Uh, I actually didn't use this for a long time and, and just recently um, realized I could do this. So do the same thing, we're gonna contour and Let's do five feet. Let's 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 go a little bit in the middle there, so it doesn't take too too long, but we still get some uh, accuracy there. Now I'm going to hit. I'm gonna just not select out of it. I want to keep the selection, and I'm going to hit record history, and now I'm going to extrude curve. Go into the vertical direction and type in five feet. Okay, so I have other videos on record history. Please check those out. Uh, but what's really cool about this is instead of trying to select the poly surface, you select the line itself and the record history essentially makes it sticky to that line work. And now you can really actually quite easily start manipulating this topography in a way that you would want. And let's say I wanted to make like a little space out of this area, for instance, like make this whole uh, different, you know? I could start to push that back. Um, and then, yeah, so that's just a really cool way that you could manipulate topography. So let's do show so we can show these various techniques of, of and let's do the last one too of, let's take this, this poly surface, control V. move it over here and let's so we did it in this direction and we did it upwards let's do it in this direction so i'm going to take this and hit contour again hit the space point specify the direction five let's do 10 feet now it's going to contour that whole entire oh i oh no i don't need to do that I was gonna say, I almost forgot to do record history, but I first have to contour it and then hit record history. So now I'm going to hit record history, extrude curve, and I'm going to, what this is saying is sometimes you don't get a complete closed circle and that way it's gonna say it's self intersecting. And for right now, just, we don't really need to worry about it. We're gonna specify the direction. And then what do we say, 10 feet? And then you can see like there is a difference between these various modes. Like this is clearly represented differently. Uh, you get a different sense for the topography. And so that's part of the reason why you would be modeling this. And so now because I recorded a history, for instance, I could come in here and start manipulating these curves. And I would say right now there, there's these curves have a lot of points to them and there would be a way to go back and simplify or rebuild those curves. But for right now, 
you know, just work with selecting a lot of points, I guess. Uh, and, and then, but it really allows you to start manipulating and you could in various different aspects start to manipulate the topography very easily to create spatial experiences. And that's what's really cool about this is you're not thinking of topography as this thing that you're just handed to, but you're thinking about it in terms of how can I shape this as an additional uh, surface that is part of my architecture. So you could think of it topography as another facade or spatial experience similar to constructing a wall or constructing a roof. You're also constructing the topography. Uh, we think of topography as, as this sort of natural element, um, but in fact, a lot of topography has, most topography has been manipulated by people. So thank you so much for, for joining and uh, please stay tuned for some more tutorials on topography, specifically the best way to bring in topography into Rhino. Cool. Thanks for listening. Have a good day. Mm -hmm.